When companies go and make large sweeping changes to their products and especially their smart home products, it can get downright ugly for consumers. And if you need some recent examples, look at Google's end of the works with Nest program and Wink's sudden subscription implementation as good examples of this. Is that going to be the case with some upcoming changes to smart things or are we all in for the ultimate in the smart home experience? Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by keeping you up to date on what could be some of the biggest changes to smart things yet. Now, before we do that, we gotta go through all of the other updates that you can use today and we'll give you a leg up on everyone else in their smart home, unless I guess they're watching this video. Now, the other thing I have to do is actually thank Peter. He is now officially, through Patreon, a sponsor of the channel and so this video is absolutely dedicated to Peter who loves the smart things platform now settle in because we do have a ton of great updates there's actually so much going on with this platform and the first thing I want to start with is something we talked about in our last smart things updates video and you guys had lots of questions about this the smart apps are not necessarily showing up when you go from classic to the new application and I actually did get an official response out of Samsung about this. There are two issues that are kind of plaguing the whole system as we transition from that classic app to the new one. And the first is actually what they called attributes. And this means things that they have access to program into the actual application and they just don't have all of the attributes that they used to have in the classic application moved over to the new app. This is obviously what they're working on and you will see those things be resolved. The other thing is actually geography and this is kind of a funny one because you know what, you wouldn't consider that your privacy laws are messing so much with you in your modern home, but they are in this case. And so Samsung is actually having to go through all of these different smart apps and migrate them with the privacy laws that they have to adhere to. And so that's making it a much longer process than you or I might expect, but Samsung is totally working through that process and you will see more and more show up as we go forward. This next segment excites me probably the most in the entire video because this is stuff you can go and implement right away in your smart home. And yes, I know I get kind of excited easily. It's something I've actually heard a few times in my life. One of more than a few things that has been missing from the new application is a focus on those location modes. And this has been a nice change very recently. What you can do is when you go into the automation section and you choose one of those location modes as a condition or part of the if statement, you can actually make that a precondition. This helps you organize by that mode as a precondition to even starting execution. Something I noticed personally because of was spending just a little bit of time with a few smart home cameras recently was actually that the notifications had really changed in the smart things platform when you have multiple cameras now number one you get all of your cameras on this notification page when you go into it you're able to see everything and then the other thing that I really loved about this was that I could see whether or not the automations that were tied to this event or this type of security event executed. Speaking of those notifications, I'm a little bit upset that I don't have a Samsung phone because within that notifications pane, only on Samsung phones right now, you can actually select connected speakers as an audio output source. Now, that means anything that's connected into your SmartThings hub. So speakers like Sonos are available for you to select. I never thought that one pixel could hurt so much, but I've definitely taken note of the pain here. Get it? It's time for Brian's personal story. Now, I'm gonna go way back to my days in university and actually in one of our final uh, class projects there. And what we were doing was creating a weightlifting system that allowed you to, as a user, get information out of it for what you were lifting, how much you were lifting, and actually how that lift was going. So 
what we could do is through the use of a three axis accelerometer, you could actually see how you were doing and we knew how many repetitions you had done. We also could measure all kinds of other components. Anyways, the point is that three axis accelerometer was so important and you actually have this inside of the contact sensors in Samsung SmartThings. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, they've given us access to that within the details of the device. Now, we can't create automation off of it yet, but this is a really important thing as far as I'm concerned, because it will allow us to create very advanced automations based off of that. If I could create a whole weight lift logging system for people at university, you can do a lot with it too. We're gonna to move on to talking about mobile presence. And you know what, I think that's a cornerstone of the platform because you can go and you can give everyone in your family a mobile device or a presence sensor. They now have the presence sensors and you can go ahead and create automation and run your security system all off of that mobile presence. Now what's happened recently is actually some more detailed options for managing that mobile presence and triggering automation with it. So while you are in the member location options on the if side of any automation, you'll notice that you can select this member is at home, this member is not at home, but you also have advanced options for choosing how long they've been away for or how long they have been in that status for. So how long have they been home? And on the flip side, if you actually choose that the member is not at home, you get to choose whether or not they stay away for a certain time length. This becomes really useful in situations like taking out the trash or if your phones are constantly appearing to be out of your home area. We do have a number of new devices and easily the biggest one is that Tuya or Smart Life platform. You can actually bring those products now in and I tried to do that. Honestly, it failed here in Canada, but in the US, I think you're gonna have great success bringing your Smart Life products all through that main app into smart things. Now, the other things you're going to find is iBlinds, iSmartGate, which I actually have in my home at the moment, and Withings and their scale has been added. ADF, which is a cloud to cloud integration. They have a number of Wi-Fi sensors and Lexi devices and their smart lighting system. Now, Smarten, it has brought their Zigbee range extender into smart things as well. And Juno has a very interesting smart light that actually has Amazon's voice assistant right on board. And I reached out to this company and they said they were gonna send me some of these right away. So I'm interested to see if we can actually bridge the gap between those two platforms in an even better way with that device. On this video, just the last time, I actually had to tell you that Arlo integration had been broken and neither company was talking to me about it and what was going on, but that integration is actually back so you can go ahead work with that again. You'll also find a new integration capability and this is something that Google announced as part of what they're calling Shed or Smart Home Entertainment Devices. Now all of the smart things, sound bars are now integrated with the Google Assistant so you can do those play, pause, fast forward, rewind, those kinds of things all with your play bar or your sound bar through Samsung SmartThings. So this is giving us another method and we will see this deepen as more of those smart home entertainment devices get deeper and deeper integration through SmartThings, which was named by Google as a major integrated partner for this new capability. The most recent firmware update to your Samsung SmartThings V2 and V3 hub actually enables the ability to redo your Z-Wave routing after you've done a network repair. Now that's a Z-Wave network repair, and then you can redo the routing. The other thing that was a part of these firmware updates was a V3 motion sensor, multi-purpose sensor, and the leak sensor all got firmware updates, but only the V3 versions. A little while ago, I spoke about Android 7 being a real problem from a security perspective in your smart home in general. Now, Samsung has kind of recognized a few of those things, and 
and they're actually taking one step back to Android 6. But what's happening here is if you're trying to use the new SmartThings app, which you are going to have to use very soon, in a device that's Android 6 or older, what you have today essentially is what you're going to ever have. You're not going to be able to get any new features after this point. One of the biggest things I'm looking forward to within the whole SmartThings platform is the integration with other Samsung products and the Galaxy watches are no exception. Those Galaxy watches and the version three has already been leaked a number of times, looks to be a great device and improve on the previous versions. And we're gonna wait on talking more about that. But the other thing that was really interesting to me is how deeply Garmin is being mentioned in terms of a partner, in terms of integration of their smartwatches. And they already had really good integration with the Garmin Connect series, but now they have the ability right in or right on the device to execute scenes inside of SmartThings. Now, a few weeks ago, many of you will have noticed a couple of articles that came out about upcoming major changes to the Samsung SmartThings platform. And and the fact is, this has been going on for a little while. Now, what I did at that moment is I said, you know what, I wanna get this one right. And I don't wanna be ahead of the news. I want to get the official word from Samsung because I have some contacts at Samsung that will help with this. Now, I've waited a couple of weeks and I'm going to give you what I have. They have not answered all of the very in-depth questions, but I promise you guys that when I get those answers, I'm going to come back with another video to really lay it out piece by piece what is going on with SmartThings. It's been pretty clear to me for a while that Samsung is really working on integrating SmartThings. And I've even had conversations with a number of individuals at SmartThings that say, yeah, we're undergoing some pretty massive changes and have been for a while. While. One of the biggest goals is obviously to increase their user base in smart things. And every time I read a number, that number has grown. And the last number I read was over a hundred million smart things users. Now that doesn't mean a hundred million active hubs are out there, but it does mean that a hundred million people have tried smart things. And that's the biggest goal or probably the second biggest goal, because the other goal has to be extracting some value from users. And whether that means selling more SmartThings products, selling more Samsung products in general, getting those systems together, selling as active subscriptions, it really doesn't matter. They want to extract value and otherwise they're not going to do any of this. So something they're doing on that front is actually related to some of the things we saw at their last developer conference, which was a real focus on commercial and or industrial larger scale applications of Samsung SmartThings and they're doing this in a couple of ways. See it's really great if they can sell you or I a V3 hub but it becomes even more important to be integrated with more companies. This will sell more hubs and it also helps them in some of the other ways that they're working on end goals to sell much more of SmartThings. Now you know what, what we've seen is the back end process for integration, it used to be called uh, Groovy, and that has basically been updated at this point. And now the new method is being used to update older companies or companies that have been integrated for a long time. They're getting them, those companies, onto this new method of integration. Plus what we're seeing as a side benefit of that is companies like Wise are saying, okay, we can jump in now and get integrated. And obviously that kind of a thing benefits you or I. The other side of that integration is larger partnerships. And we're going to see more and more of these, not just to sell the Samsung appliances to new developments, but also to get smart things software integrated into more products. And you know what, we saw this with the Nvidia Shield Link and ADT, but we're going to see that happen more and more as we go forward. You're going to see smart things on devices and you know the first kinds of ones that i point to are modem or router manufacturers embedding smart things into their devices i think you're going to see that with a number of isps very soon one of the other things is quite frankly the classic app is done and it is time for you to put on your big boy pants and get over this one yes you're going to miss a feature from the 1950s that you had back way when but 
for now you're going to have to get over this the fact is the new app is much better and it's going to lead us to a much better place so let's get over this one together if we got to come together have a little hug it out let's hug it out mourn for the classic app but it's over guys by the end of the year now what does putting your big boy pants on do for you and I well the new app does something with standard device handlers so they're taking a bunch of the custom ones and they're combining them into a standard device handler that will manage all of these different device types that used to have a custom one that doesn't seem on the surface like it's really important and some people will be upset by that idea but the fact is when they create these standard device handlers and they apply them to all of your devices much more of your automation will become locally handled on your smart things hub and that's important because that's going to increase reliability which is going to increase how often things work which is going to increase the happiness of your wife and therefore your life of course it's more than that and there are going to be some things that will frustrate people so for example the groovy ide is on its last legs but samsung has acknowledged that this is a really important component for their developer community and that they will try and maintain a lot of those things going forward so while many people are concerned about the loss of ID the fact is most of the components will be saved over time in different ways this is not going to be perfect and there are going to be gaps but Samsung has acknowledged how important that IDE is and actually our very last video I showed you how important that IDE is with the ability to actually see the amounts of failures you're having with Zigbee and and Z-Wave devices and diagnose those issues through that ID. So go check that out. That is on screen right now. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. And of course, don't hate, automate.